Hello, welcome to Design Shing. My name is Victoria Shingleton and I'm a design professional in Los Angeles, California. In mid-March, I realized I was going to be spending a lot more time at home this year, so I figured it'd be the perfect opportunity to tackle some home improvement projects. In this video, I tackle the reorganization of my entry closet as well as the redesign of my entryway space. Let's get started. Like so many other people around the world today, I am safer in my home, which means I want my home to be the cleanest, most organized it's ever been. And I am ready to tackle one of the areas of my house that really just mm, pains me. It's the entryway closet. My roommate and I share this closet, so these aren't all of my coats. They're both of our coats, and we have a lot of jackets, and we store them in this closet. So the function that I need for this space, jacket storage for our cleaning supplies. So like I have a steam mop, and then back of the back I have like a swiffer and, and a mop and a broom, and it's just really hard to access those right now. We have this shoe rack that just kind of holds our uh, miscellaneous cleaning supplies, which I actually don't mind this. I think it's like a pretty good way to store, except obviously like cords hanging out and stuff. Not so great. So we could probably organize this a little bit better. But we have a reusable bag problem. We, you know, have these reusable bags, but we keep getting more. I don't know if you guys have the same problem. Like every event we go to, there's more and more reusable bags and they just get thrown into the bottom of our closet. Up here, we've got like a picnic blanket and a wine case, and that looks like some party supplies. That can probably go somewhere else. Uh, balloon time? I don't know where else I can go right now. Looks like some like scarves and then laundry supplies. So, oh, and then one more thing is over in the corner right here, we have ironing board. I also want to mount a vacuum cleaner in this closet. So I need to figure out how to reorganize this space so that it functions well for us because I want it to be something that we can keep up and maintain easily rather than just us throwing all the garbage in here and then slamming the door so that nobody can see this ugly mess because this isn't really working well for us. It's kind of hard to like find a coat. You have so many coats here. Maybe I need to get rid of some coats. So let's start. Okay, so step one, I'm gonna start by taking all of these bags out of here. I'm just gonna get them out of the way. I'm gonna take everything out of the closet and see what we don't really need in here. Okay, so the closet is empty. Now let's clean it. I'm going to take this opportunity to, oh, there's even more things up here. See, I'm short, so I don't even know. Like, I am going to measure out how much space I have up here. So I'll know when I'm, if, I mean, probably when I'm purchasing like little organizers, how much room I have. I measured the entire closet, paying attention to the depth of shelves and clearances. I then sketched out the dimension closet, which helped me do some pre-planning on how to organize the space. Before going to the store to buy any sort of bins or organizers, it's always a good idea to measure the shelves so that you know what will fit. After measuring the closet, the next thing I tackled was folding all of those reusable bags. This is a really simple fold. I flatten the bag, then I fold it in either thirds or fourths depending on the width of the bag. Then I fold it in thirds in the opposite direction and secure it by wrapping the handles around the folded bag. If the handles are too long, I twist them a few times before wrapping to shorten the length. Folding bags like this doesn't take much time and it helps keep them compact and tidy. So 
So one of the goals with this entryway closet is to mount this Dyson stick back on the wall so that it can charge in the closet and always be like ready to use and easy to access. So this way, you know, we can clean more often and more easily. So this Dyson stick back weighs, eh, it's supposed to weigh less than six pounds and you can like have some accessories on the mount so it will stay. It weighs 10 pounds altogether. So drywall has a structural capacity of about 50 pounds. Anything less than that, you're pretty good just going straight into the drywall with a drywall anchor. Another thing with the vacuum is that it requires electricity. I don't have a electrical convenience receptacle in my closet. So that's down or right. There actually, on the other side of my closet, is a convenience outlet. If I was a homeowner, it would be so easy for me to just call up an electrician and have him swap the direction of the receptacle. However, I rent my apartment, so I can't go messing with the electrical. Not cool. So what I have to do is run an extension cord. I've already put in the drywall anchors, and now it's time to mount the Dyson. Okay, so now I've fitted out my drill with the appropriate size head uh, for the screw that came with the Dyson package, and I'm just going to uh, drill through the mount and put this guy on the wall. Also, notice I'm <laughs> also notice I'm um, wearing tennis shoes. This is a big pet peeve of mine when people are doing like home improvement projects and they're wearing flip flops. If you're working with any sort of power tools, you should be wearing closed toed shoes because if this falls on your foot, one it's heavy, it could really hurt you. But you know, if this is something with a blade or you know a, a bit that's really sharp, it can puncture your foot. So be careful and always wear closed toed shoes when using power tools. Now, the telltale moment, the moment of truth. Will you work? Will you go? Oh, it works! Finally, we have an easy to access vacuum. I'm pretty pumped. After the closet was all neat and organized, it was time to decorate the space. Now, it has a drop ceiling, so it's kind of a dark, shadowy area, and rather than trying to make it brighter and bigger, I decided to lean into its small scale with a dark colored pattern wallpaper. The first thing I did was prep the walls by sanding down any raised areas and wiping them clean. I then planned where each panel was going to go on the wall. Using a level and measuring tape, I used a pencil to mark a vertical line on the wall. This will serve as a guide for me to align each panel and keep them level. Next, I pre-cut all of the wallpaper panels. Make sure to cut your panels a few inches longer than the wall so that you leave a margin for error. It's much easier to trim excess paper off the wall than to hang a panel and realize it's just a tad too short. Now, if you're working with rolls of wallpaper, you'll need to be cautious of the pattern match when cutting multiple panels. If you were to just cut the second piece the same length as the first, you may find that your pattern doesn't align when hanging on the wall. Wallpaper specifications will give you the distance for pattern matching, so you could calculate in advance how much excess you have per roll. However, to verify that my pattern is aligning, I prefer to just roll it out next to the first panel I cut and match the pattern before cutting my next. Now, when fixing the wallpaper to the wall, it can be tempting to start in the corner of the room, but I would encourage you not to do that. Walls are rarely straight and at 90 degree angles, so it's important to leave an allowance. Notice that as I hang the first panel on the wall, I'm aligning to the right edge of the vertical pencil mark on the wall rather than butting the wallpaper up to the corner. This way, I know that the panel is hung straight and I'll go back and trim off any excess on the left later. This is a peel and stick removable wallpaper, and it's not only easy to remove and great for renters, but it's also repositionable. So if you make a mistake while installing, don't sweat it. Just carefully peel it off and try again. To apply the paper, I peel down the top 10 to 12 inches of backing. I line the edge to the vertical pencil marking on the wall and press to adhere. I use a credit card to smooth the paper down and remove any air bubbles. Once I've adhered the top, I slowly work my way down, peeling the backing down as I go. If I find that I'm misaligned or have a large air bubble, I just peel the paper back off the wall and try again. This wallpaper does not have an overlap, so each panel is designed to butt up against the next. 
However, something I wish I would have known in advance is that vinyl paper does shrink a little over time due to temperature and moisture, and with the dark navy blue color, when the panels pull away from each other just slightly, you can see the sliver of white wall between them. If I were to do this again, I would worry less about pattern matching and instead strive for a small eighth inch overlap. Since this is a busy pattern and organic rather than geometric, I don't think that a misaligned pattern would be very noticeable and I would prefer it to the tiny white spaces. Hanging wallpaper is very simple. The trickiest part is cutting around switches, receptacles, and other conflicting fixtures on the wall. Make sure you remove your switch plates and outlet covers before installing. For switches and receptacles, I just install the wallpaper right over them and then use an X-Acto knife to cut the paper around. Another tricky part was the corner. I originally thought that I would be able to use a single panel on the corner and then just fold it onto the perpendicular wall. However, like I mentioned earlier, walls are rarely at 90 degree angles, so I had issues with bubbles as I tried to smooth the wallpaper onto the adjacent wall. I ended up having to just cut that panel at the corner and install it essentially as two separate panels. After all of the panels are on the wall, it's time for the fun part, trimming the edges. I use the metal straight edge and an X-Acto knife to carefully trim off the excess paper at the baseboard, ceiling, and corners. Okay, so now my walls are all wallpapered and it's time to put up the decorations and wall art. And I really wanna make sure that I get it just right because since it's already wallpapered, uh, I could go back and patch it if I make a mistake, but I really want it to look good the first time. I don't, I don't want to ruin my, my nice wallpaper job. So first up, we have a hook rack. So I've always wanted to put coat hooks in the space because I think it'd be nice, you know, if people are coming in to visit, they could take their coat off and hook it up. Or if, you know, we have the one jacket wearing regularly, like this could work well to just keep that one jacket out. So my requirements with this was I want it to be a rack, meaning it's on like a board. because so I want it to stand off more from the wall. Since I just put the wallpaper up, I, I don't want it getting like rubbed a lot. And I think that having this protrude more from the wall will kind of help keep things off of the wall itself and there'll be more hanging in front of it. I think this will work well. I'm excited with it. It's from West Elm and it originally wasn't on my radar, but then they had a premiere day up to 70% off sale. This wasn't 70% off, but it was pretty good. It went from being a normal price of $70 to a sale price of 55. Next up, this is a story of like, you can find artwork everywhere and it doesn't need to be expensive or difficult to come by. It's pretty easy. So I, saw these prints. They were actually part of a photo shoot in Harper's Bazaar magazine. And when I saw this, I thought, wow, like they actually did a high-end photo shoot in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, this was taken at Disney World, but I, you know, I'm more familiar with Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. And it really spoke to me and you just take an X-Acto and run it across the spine and, and then framed it. These frames are very inexpensive. Well, they go on sale a lot. They're just Michael's frames. Always watch for the Michael's frame sale because you can usually get them heavily discounted. I chose these prints because I liked the ratio of background to human figure. You, you see a lot going on. You saw the human, but she's not like the main focal point. It, it has a lot to do with atmosphere as well, which was more important to me. I like this one that just says like Harper's Bazaar on it because it tells the story. It kind of like tells people like where this came from. One more print. I actually had this one. It was already on my wall before we started this. It is a Jeff Mendel. It just says, hello, <laughs> in uh, gold balloons. I think it's a good way to like welcome people into your home, like kind of a happy way. A really tough part, this frame. <laughs> When I went to Target, I initially had a different frame in mind. It's a smaller frame, 16 by 24, I think, were the dimensions. I got there and it wasn't out on the floor. They had said they had limited stock, but it wasn't on the floor and I just kept walking by the mirrors over and over and over again. And I kept seeing this one. I've always liked this mirror. Target has it year round. It's part of their Project 62. It's $59 for this big 28 inch diameter mirror. It's a great deal. It's a beautiful look. I've always loved it. So I was like, ah, I'll just buy it. Also, I wanted to be really careful what I reflect 
with this mirror because when you hang a mirror you have to consider what's on the other side what is going to show up so if i hang it facing out toward my living room you're going to see my living room in my entryway which could be okay i guess but if i hang it here on the inside you'll see the opposite wall which is more wallpaper so i think it'll tie in better that's my hope this is the piece i'm most not sure about so i hope i like it so now the artwork is hung and I feel pretty good about it, but you'll notice it's very echoey over here and that's because we have a one more step and that is to roll out the carpet. Okay, so first off, I have this under, what do you call it, carpet pad. And that's because this is a tile floor, so the carpet will slide on it and you can totally just have like the ground go out from under you. So this is important to keep it from slipping around. Now the rug, the stinker rug, and I hope this works out. I went with blue because it's an entryway, so I wanted it to be darker so you don't see like people's feet on like a white rug. And this is indoor-outdoor, so I'm hoping that stands up a little bit better to everyday foot traffic. I bought this rug online and the brand is New Loom. So one thing about these rugs online, you can buy them at a lot of different retailers. Pretty much any rug you see at Wayfair is also in stock at Overstock, Amazon, Rugs USA, Joss and Maine. There's a lot of online retailers for these rugs. They carry the same brands. So my suggestion is if you find a rug you like, search either the name of it or like do a reverse image search and see who else is selling this rug and get the best price. Okay, so hold up. As soon as I stepped back to take a look at that blue rug, I didn't really like it in this space. I thought it was competing too much with the wallpaper. And since I spent so much time on the wallpaper, I want your eye to go up to the paper and the walls and not be distracted by the rug on the ground. I didn't want the two patterns competing with each other. So I resold that rug online and was able to have someone pick it up locally so that way I didn't have to pay to ship it back. And then I ordered a new rug, which is a neutral, and hopefully this one looks better in this space. Rug take two. Welcome to my entryway closet tour. Let's take a peek at how this organization turned out. So coats still here. I took out a couple of my coats that were like more fashiony than um, you know a warm coat or for the weather. So I put those back in my closet. We have a few less coats in here, but most of them stayed. And then for the scarves that were up above, I purchased this little scarf holder, which is like very sturdy, very nice. So up above, I actually took the balloon time guy out of the box. I liked it better without the box, you know, sometimes if you've got a big bulky box, just try getting rid of it. Laundry supplies, I put my laundry supplies in this bucket. And so whenever I need laundry, I'll just put that down. And then I put Maddie's. Maddie's laundry supplies are in this basket. I know what you're wondering, where are the brooms? Well, you're gonna have to kind of part the seas for this. Shove everything to the side. The brooms and Swiffer mounted in the back of the closet. So if you need a broom or a Swiffer, you'll just have to part the sea of coats to get it out of the way. I left this hanging shoe organizer and just kind of took some things out of the boxes that were up there and fit them in as I could here. We have like our Dyson attachment pieces in here. I took the Swiffer liners out of the box that was up there and put them in here, as well as the mop pads. So we have a lot of hanging organization for just the small little knickknacks that we might need to reach on a daily basis. Now, the bags that we're taking over the closet. I have folded the bags and they're now in this little basket. So if we need a reusable bag, pull it out of the basket. 
paper bags. I'm gonna try to have us just use these up and recycle them, but for now, they are inside of this guest bag. Now the Dysons. So I had mounted that new Dyson. It's the V7 Absolute. It is in the front of the closet. I'm very happy with this vacuum so far. I am totally fine with not getting the latest and greatest V11. The V7 is a big upgrade for my former Dyson. But speaking of my former Dyson, I purchased a mount for this Dyson online and I mounted it up in the closet as well. So if we have like a messier mess, you know, maybe something outside or something kind of like ew, goopy that we don't want to clean up with this, I just have this guy ready with the handheld so that we can easily pop him out of the closet, but not quite as easily as it is to get this guy out. Okay, so for the Dyson charging, remember I didn't have an outlet in this closet. So what I did was I took an extension cord and I ran it around this wall to the outlet that's in the back of, uh, on the other side of this wall. And there we have it. This is my cleaner, more organized, easier to use closet. I think having it organized really helps us clean more because it's easy to get the tools that we need to clean. Let's take a look at the final design. The navy blue constellation wallpaper makes a huge impact in the small space. For the finishing touches, I wrapped the switch plate cover in gold contact paper. I also changed out the hardware on the closet doors and installed brass knobs which match other metals used in the space. I was very pleased with how well the hook rack and Galaxy's Edge artwork worked with the wallpaper. And the location for the mirror turned out great, it's in the perfect spot to check yourself as you're walking out the door. I am very happy with how this project turned out. It's the perfect, bold, daring welcome, which really sets the tone for the rest of my apartment. I think a small space like this is the perfect opportunity to experiment with bold textures or color or pattern. It can really make an impact. Thanks so much for watching my entryway makeover video. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to reading your ideas, your thoughts in the comment section below. And please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe to my channel for future renter-friendly design projects on the way. Thanks for watching.